Hi, welcome to Enchiridion. I am more than glad to share with you these facts on Gigantophis. Gigantophis was a giant snake. For over a hundred years, Gigantophis was considered the largest known snake, a title that has since been given to the even larger Paleocene constrictor Titanoboa, described from Colombia in 2009. Nonetheless, even at the lower estimate of just over 30.5 feet or 9 meters, Gigantophis is still bigger than the reticulated python, which is thought to be the largest known snake today at almost 23 feet or 7 meters long. Nonetheless, more recent size estimates have placed Gigantophis at 22.64 feet or 6.9 meters long, so it wasn't as big as previously believed to have been, yet nonetheless large. Gigantophis lived about 40 million years ago during the Eocene epoch of the Paleogene period in the Paratathus Sea within the Northern Sahara where Egypt and Algeria are now located. Like other prehistoric snakes, Gigantophis was a constrictor that squeezed the life out of its prey as opposed to using venom. Gigantophis could have used its size to face almost any moderately sized prey. Although it has been suggested that Gigantophis preyed upon small proboscideans, mammals that would grow large into today's elephants. In 2014, remains of Gigantophis were described from Pakistan by Rajat Al. These remains appear to be slightly different to the known type species Gigantophis garstini, yet still much closer to it than other nomad soid snakes. These have been referred to as Gigantophis sp. The now broad distribution of Gigantophis remains in North Africa and South Asia suggests that Gigantophis had a much wider distribution than previously thought. Perhaps encompassing other areas of Africa, the Middle East and possibly even further into Asia. This also suggests an early irradiation of the genus beginning early in the Eocene and perhaps even into the Paleocene, though all known Gigantophis fossils are mid to late Eocene in age. Gigantophis is a member of the Matsoidae, a group which includes other prominent prehistoric snakes like Wanambi and Matsoya. The species is known only from a small number of fossils, mostly vertebrae. Its discovery was published in 1901 by paleontologist Charles William Andrews, who described it, estimated its length to be around 30 feet, and named it Garstini in honor of Sir William Garston, KCMG, the Under Secretary of State for Public Works in Egypt. In 2013, vertebrae collected in Pakistan were found to be similar to Gigantophis vertebrae collected in Egypt, but their exact affinities are uncertain. Gigantophis means giant snake. It was named by Andrews in 1901. Gigantophis belonged to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Cardata, the class Reptilia, the order Squamata, the suborder Serpentes, the family Matsoidae the genus Gigantophis, and the type species Gigantophis garstini. Gigantophis is classified as a member of the extinct family Matsoidae. The only known species within the genus is Gigantophis garstini. It was a carnivore. It was almost twice as long as Wanambi and rivaled even the colossal Titanoboa, yet these were older estimates. Jason Head, of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. compared fossil Gigantophis vertebrae to those of the largest modern snakes and concluded that the extinct snake could grow from 30.5 to 35.1 feet or 9.3 and 10.7 meters in length. It would have been more than 10% longer than its largest living relatives. Later estimates, based on allometric equations scaled from the articular processes of tail vertebrae referred to Gigantophis, revised the length of Gigantophis to 22.64 feet, 0.98 feet give or take, or 6.9 meters, 0.3 meters give or take. It has been discovered in Algeria, Egypt, and the southern Zahara, North Africa, and in the Khadra Formation of Pakistan, South Asia. It lived during the Priabonian of the Eocene, 37 to 35 million years ago, or roughly 40 million years ago. Fossil representation includes specimens of three individuals. And with that, thank you for watching. I initially thought Gigantophis rivaled Titanoboa, yet in fact it was much smaller than previously conceived of. It's sort of disappointing and at the same time exciting when new updates of prehistoric creatures' sizes are published.
and some of our favorite creatures are much smaller than we thought, and others are much larger than we thought. It's interesting. I really like prehistoric snakes and I wish we could have more complete remains, though that's quite hard. To learn more about the exact scutes, the possible patterns, coloration, and other cool traits. It's something that will continue evolving with new discoveries and novel, innovative paleontological discovery methods. As always, thank you for watching. This is Ankai Ridian. See you next time.